Hi, I'm Oliver Lundy, I'm an automotive photographer in the UK and I make videos on automotive photography and how to improve. This is part of my how to get started with automotive photography. So after you've watched this video, by all means, check out my other ones. There's some really useful tips in there as well. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to find good photography locations for automotive photography, what makes a good photography location and how to find them. So first of all, what actually makes a good location for car photography or motorcycle photography, automotive photography? There's a, there's, a, there's a couple of things, but the, the main ones are must obviously be accessible by car. Um, access is quite often one of the most challenging uh, things with any location. And there's quite a lot of really cool locations that the moment you pull up and park a car there, security will come out and kick you off. So either you can adopt a, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission and do a run and gun, pull up, park, get the, get the camera out, take the shot, and just accept that you're only gonna get what you can get until you do get kicked off or you can actually go the proper channels and contact them and ask them for permission. Quite often you might have to file for a kind of license to do it, which can cost money. So um, generally speaking, you wanna start, build up a bank of reliable locations where you're not gonna get kicked off and that you know can work. So number one is accessible. Number two is you're not gonna get kicked off by security. Number three, ideally, is lots of different options. So different uh, angles that you can get, lots of different locations within that location that give you slightly different backgrounds and different vibes so that you can maximize what you can get without having to constantly be hopping from one location to another during the limited time that you might have access to a car. One that you might not think of is space to work. There's no good having a really really cool location if you then can't back up very far to get the photo so you need to have space to work you need to be able to move the car around into different angles different and different um, ways of shooting the car and also you need to not have people coming in between you and, and getting in your way and having a cluttered background and things like that so generally speaking things like car meets are actually really hard places to get good photography because there's always something in the background there's always someone in your way there's always other things going on which means you don't have the space to work and you don't have the space to isolate the car but following on from that ideally you don't want busy places anywhere where there's going to be lots of other cars parking lots of other people it's going to make shooting and getting good photos that much more difficult so there are some great locations out there like lookout spots for example that are amazing for sunset images but the car park's always packed and even if you do get a spot where you can park the car you're going to have umpteen other cars parked right next to you which is going to make getting a good photo that much more challenging so above all as well as all the other things you ideally want to find places that are quiet and that where there's not a lot of space empty car parks um for example or places like industrial estates where there's uh, during the weekend where there's no other cars places like that where you can reliably go there and there's not a lot of other people around how do you find such locations so first of all utilize instagram it's a great tool when you know what you're doing and how to find the, these locations. So number one is search photography and your local area. So your town and your, um, you know, your, the, the city or the, the state or the, the county that you live in and just the word photography. And hopefully what you'll find is a bunch of people who have tagged places that look cool and you can scroll through and you can go, oh, actually that quite looks cool. And you can then check out that location, think if it might fit for uh, a car photo. Secondly, look at, other car photographers so try and find the other car photographers in your area if there are any or in at least in your country and look at where they're shooting quite often um, people will use reliable locations over and over again and you can if they're not tagging the actual location then you can either work it out from um, you know just the photo trying to work out where it's from or quite often if you just reach out to these people say who you are say that you love their work and that they've been an inspiration to you and that you you use their work um, as a guide all the time and you'd love to know where x photo was taken chances are they're going to say yeah it's over there and it's here or here's a pin of it or whatever it is um, equally if you reach out to the owner of the car 
you might get some luck there where you may not get one if it's a really busy photographer who doesn't have the chance to respond to every message. They might be, oh yeah, that was by Tower Bridge and, or whatever it might be. The next tip is to go onto Instagram, type in your local area in the search function and then see who are posting pictures of cars. This is um, one of the ways to find local locals who are into cars and then ask them where they shoot their cars because they're going to have done all of this research for you they're going to want to take good pictures of their cars and they're going to be driving around trying to find good spots and they normally almost always will have some kind of recommendation of places that might work and lastly before we move on from instagram make sure you're getting used to saving posts so there is a save function within instagram it's in the bottom right it looks like a little flag and if you press and hold it you can create different categories so you can save different folders now i do i've got loads of these ideas i'd like to try inspirational photos concepts that are great locations that are great and um, all sorts of different ones but one of mine is car photography locations and it's ones that i use but it's also ones that um, other photographers that I either know or follow on Instagram use and I save them all and then when I'm talking to people about potential shoots I can say oh look here are all the different locations that we can go to which ones look the best to you or which ones are local to you or which ones have the kind of vibe that you're after and that brings me on to my next point which actually when it comes to locations you've got to think about it in terms of theme or at least style so um, there are certain things that you would you, you don't want to mismatch. So for example, you wouldn't shoot a classic car in a gritty urban environment. Well, I suppose you could, but in a sense of juxtaposition. But generally speaking, you want to find something that suits the car that you're actually going to shoot. So if you're going to be shooting a luxury car, then you want a luxury environment. If you're going to be shooting a modified car, you might go with something more city or urban based. Um, but when you're thinking about your locations, you want to think about them in terms of what are the type of shots that you can get at these locations. Is it going to be a gritty urban shot? Is it going to be a classic, clean, um, you know, country house, expensive hotel type shot? Is it going to be a dark environment and you're going to use lights or is it going to be a night city shoot or whatever it is? And then when you're thinking about the types of shoot that you want to do with a car, you can then start thinking about the locations that would suit that car best and then make a plan from there. And lastly, what I recommend is, is that you use your a Google map to create a directory of all the different locations that you use, because over time you'll build up a lot of them and it's not always easy to remember them all. So what I have is I have a Google map, map saved and on that map is all of the locations that I use and Google has the function to type in like a note so you can tag a place and go, yeah, this is a location that is good for whatever it is. Here's some notes about access, or here's some, you know, it might be great at night, but it's terrible during the day, or, you know, you need to be careful of Farmer Joe who lives next door, who doesn't like it, or whatever it might be, and save it so that when you're ever stuck for a location to shoot, um, you can refer to it and you can go back and you can prompt yourself to go, oh yeah, I remember that place, let's go there. And lastly, why is location so important? And it really is, you know, the car is the subject of your photo but the location can make a huge difference to the overall vibe of the shot. So here's a shot taken in a car park. It's one of my local ones and it's, it's quite good for a kind of industrial vibe. Um, and it's normally quite quiet when I'm going there sort of past um, five, six in the evening, it's almost always empty. So it's nice and reliable, but this has a very certain vibe. It's industrial, it's very, um, Kind of gritty almost and now here's a shot taken at one of my other local spots it's a local country road it's long it's straight it's got white fences and trees down each side it's a really picturesque site but it's a completely different vibe to the industrial uh, look so ideally you want to build up locations that have these kind of different concepts or themes so that you can pick out a theme or a concept that's going to suit the car or suit the request of the owner of the car so that you you can get the right look in the right place. Because one of the most frustrating things in photography is where you have an idea of what you want an image to look like and you go out to your location and the weather's not right or the location isn't quite right and you just can't get what you're after. And sometimes you just have to accept that what you were after isn't going to happen, but you can work with what you have got and just change and pivot your theme and your concept and maybe you might not have that classic sunset, but you might be able to get like a darker, moody, cloudy sky type shot. And 
Uh, lastly, there is one other type of location which is really, really useful um, and you wouldn't necessarily think about it. And it's having a space that is completely dark. Now, blackout spaces uh, in a studio setting are amazing. I'm gonna put up some photos now from a blackout studio space that I have access to where you can, uh, there are lights there and they look wicked, but if you turn all the lights out, it goes completely black, which means you're not fighting with any of the ambient light, which means there's no unwanted reflections on the car and you don't have to battle with any environment, background or anything like that, it's just pure black. And it's awesome, it's really, really cool. It gives you a really different aesthetic to, to the classic kind of you know, side of the road or calming type photos. Um, but studio time is very expensive. You know, you're talking about kind of normally four to five hundred pounds for a session minimum um, and if you're going into London then you're talking about you know, three four times that uh, on a weekday um, so studio space is difficult to come by but blackout spaces can be anywhere where it's dark enough that there's no ambient light so if you go out into the country if you can find motorway underpasses that aren't lit um, uh, anywhere where you can just when if there's no lights if there's, you know, no street lights and no kind of ambient light coming from nearby buildings or roads or anything like that then when you turn your, all your lights off it goes completely black then effectively you have the same thing and then you can use lights to light up the car and only the car and i'm going to throw up some images here from a motorway underpass that i use that's completely black when you're not using any lights and you can when you use these lights you effectively can completely isolate the car from the background and it really pops and it gives it a totally different look than it would do if you were to shoot the same thing in the same place just during the day. So finding spots that are really good for night shooting and particularly blackout spaces are uh, is also really, really good. So another tip is always be on the lookout for, for photography spaces. When you're driving around, when you're dropping your friends off, when you're going shopping, when you're going to work, anything like this, just keep your, your mind on the idea that is, would that be a good spot? You know, can, could I get a car in there? Would it look good? Um, is there access? What does the background look like? Is it good? Um, and sometimes you might be looking for something really basic. Like so there's a location that I use, which is essentially just a big blank brick wall. I'll show you some photos of it from, uh, I'll show you some photos from there. And this is, the reason why it's a really good spot is that it's right by a dead end. So there's never any issues with traffic because it doesn't go anywhere. Um, there is a, it's a staff parking for a, a local uh, estate agent, I think, you know, in the evening or during the day, you know, if someone does turn up and they want to get into the parking, just move the car, it's no big deal. But most of the time there's no traffic or no issues with, with people wanting to get by. So you've got two things, you've got a nice clean background and you're not gonna get bothered by anyone. Um, so this is a, a really good location and I found it just by walking around my local town um, and realizing, oh, that would actually be a good spot for, for a photo. So just researching your own area, driving around uh, at different times of day, so at night and during the day, and in the morning and the evening, um, preferably golden hour time, and uh, and seeing which locations look particularly good and which don't. And you'll, you'll very quickly build up a collection of these locations that will work for you. So now that you have got your locations, it's time to get shooting. So if you haven't already checked it out, you can check out my video on how to find cars to shoot to build up your portfolio. Or if you're already getting clients, then crack on, take your clients to these awesome locations that you found. And uh, by all means, ask me anything you like in the comments. I try to respond to all of the questions. Drop me a like if this video was useful to you. By all means, tag me in the photos that you take and um, mention me in, in the caption and just you know say that this is a, a you know, I found this uh, location, what do you think? Um, always love to see uh, you know your work and, and hopefully I'll, uh, I'll do my best to comment on it if I can. And uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, then uh, by all means, subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you get notified. And I'll see you in the next one.